Hi, everybody. I'm back with a brand new story. And I'm going to share this story with you. It's called Frog and Friends. Best summer ever. And it's by Eve Bunting. I hope you enjoy the story. Frog and Friends, Best Summer Ever, written by Eve Bunting. Sometimes at night, little brown bats swooped down to visit Frog. Sometimes they talked about how different they were. It was a game they liked to play. I swim and you do not, Frog said, not unkindly. I fly and you do not, little brown bat said. Frog nodded, but I'm a good leaper. Sometimes leaping feels like flying. I can understand that, little brown bat said, but I think it's prettier way up high in the night sky. Frog sighed, it may be. I can't have everything. So they're comparing what they can do. Uh, that bat can fly and frog can hop. And frog is like leaping is kind of like flying in a way. Let's go on with the game, little brown bat said. I'm furry and you're not. She stroked her furry body with her leathery wings. But I like your skin. It's so shiny and it's such a pretty color. Thank you, frog said. I like your ear. I don't have ears, but you can hear, little brown bat said. Not as well as you, frog said, but I do have excellent eyes. See how bulgy they are? And I can see this way and that way without turning my head. That's such a good thing. My eyes are not great, but I have a gift. I can hear echoes and they tell me where I am. So I don't bump into trees or stars, Frog suggested. So even though their friends are very different from each other and they're comparing all the differences that they have with each other, they're still really good friends. And you don't have to be the same to be such good friends. So Bat was talking about how he's furry and he has and he has good ears and Frog was talking about how he, he has good eyes, but Bat said, I don't really have good eyes. So it's okay to have differences. They thought for a while, we both love bugs. I can catch them as I fly, little brown bat said. I lie on my lily pad. I catch them on my long sticky tongue. Frog flicked out his tongue to show her. That's a very handsome tongue, little brown bat said. They stayed talking in the soft, warm dark. Little brown bat swung by her legs from the oak tree branch. Frog sat on the stone by the pond. Some people say I'm ugly, little brown bat said. Frog shook his head. You're not, you're dark and lovely. Some also say that I'm ugly, but once a girl wanted to kiss me. I'm not surprised, little brown bat said. You have a very nice face. So here they are and they're talking about how some people don't have, some people think they're kind of ugly and, not, and they're like, no, no. And each one's saying, no, you're not, no, you're not. And they're being really good friends to each other, very supportive. They were quiet together. I like the night, Frog said. I like the moon and shadows. I do too. Most nights I dance, Frog said. Dancing makes me happy. I dance too, little brown bat said. I dance with the clouds. We are the same and we're not the same. So there's some things that are the same about them. They both like the night and they um, like the moon and shadows and they like some things about the night, but the things that they can do are different. We don't have to be the same to be friends, Frog said, and that's a very good thing. I have rabbit and raccoon and possum and chameleon and jumping mouse and squirrel and you, and hippo is also a part-time friend. I'm glad we're friends. I am too. Little Brown wafter, waved her wings. Frog left the wind, 
uh, frog felt the lift of the wind. She was leaving. Now I must fly, little brown bat said, but I'll be back soon. Goodbye, frog said, au revoir. Sometimes he liked to speak French. And that was one chapter in the book. This is another chapter. And I like that one that showed that even though they were so different with each other, they still were friends. So they had some things that were the same and some things were different and they still were kind of best friends. And you don't have to be the same as your friend. You can like, some things could be the same and some things could be different. So this is Frog Takes a Vacation. I'm going on a vacation, Frog told Raccoon. Why, Raccoon asked. I think I need a change, Frog said. Okay, I'll go with you, Raccoon said. It may be cold here. You'll need me, you'll need me to tie your scarf. Thank you, Frog said. That will be nice. He did not tell Raccoon that he wanted to be alone, that he wanted quiet and some thinking time. Sometimes you just want to be alone and time to think. Is it true that you're going on vacation? Squirrel asked Frog. Yes, I think I need a change. Where are you going, Squirrel asked. I don't know yet. There's a lovely place I spotted from the top of Elm Tree. It has a pond and trees and berry bushes and grass. Does it have a napping rock, Frog asked? Yes, a fine flat one. I'll come with you. I can show you, Squirrel said. That will be nice. Frog began to see that being alone and thinking was not going to happen. So now everybody wants to come on vacation with him. I like change, Chameleon said. He ran to a yellow bush and changed from green to yellow. See, may I come? Certainly, that will be nice, Frog said. Possum's babies jumped up and down. We want to go, we want to go. May we, Frog, may we? Certainly, Frog said, that will be nice. Little Jumping Mouse said, I don't want to stay here all by myself. Then come with us, Raccoon said. Will that be all right, Frog? Frog did not want to be rude. That will be nice, he said. So even though he really just wanted some time for thinking and to be alone, uh, everybody wants to come with him, but he wants to be nice. He doesn't want to be rude. So he's like, oh, it's okay, that'll be nice. We must tell Rabbit goodbye, Raccoon asked. She'll be sad that she can't come. She can't leave her new babies. Frog sighed. We don't want her to be sad. She can come. We can bring her babies. We can each carry one or two. Yay, yay. The little possums clap their little applause. They're like, yay. They went to Rabbit's rabbit hole and they called in. I think a vacation will be good for me, Rabbit said. My babies would like it too. So Squirrel led the way. They carried the babies. Jumping, jumping Mouse could not carry any. The babies were bigger than she was. They walked and they hoped and they ran and they swung through the trees. Here's the place, Squirrel said. It was lovely. There was grass to eat and worms and spiders and flies and berries, two kinds. There was something for everyone. The baby rabbit slept. Everyone wanted to bunny sit. All the little babies, Let's look how cute they are. Rabbit slept too on the napping rock. I've been getting no sleep because of the little bunnies, she said. When it began to get dark, Frog said, I think it's time to go home now. It was such a nice change, Chameleon said. Fun, Possum agreed. Fun is what vacations are for. Frog nodded, you're right. Raccoon tied Frog's scarf in a bow. Let's do this again next year. Yes, Frog said, it was the best vacation ever. Thank you for all coming with me. You're welcome, they said. Frog felt all pepped up. A vacation was all he needed. Now he can go home and be alone and have some thinking time. Happy on his very own napping rock. So even though he wanted to go on vacation and just be alone, uh, he didn't want to hurt his friends' feelings. They're like, come. And he wound up having a really good time with his friends. And they had a good time. And then when they came back, then he was able to have his alone time and his thinking time on his napping rock. Okay.
so I am going to stop there. But if you would like to read the rest of the stories, let me share again so you can see. Okay, you can read all about Frog and Friends by Eve Bunting. Okay, and you can read the rest of the story. I hope you like that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy and happy reading to all.